everybody, welcome to the podcast. Grab your pen and paper, get your Bible open. We're going to dive in because you're going to be finding out that Jesus Christ is not a God. Real Life presents the Jack Hibbs Podcast with intention and boldness to proclaim truth, equip the saints, and impact our culture. Today, if this podcast lifts you up and encourages you to live a more fulfilled life in Christ, then make sure you leave us one of those five-star ratings. To us, that's like saying amen or yes. Then that rating will encourage others to listen. Now open your hearts to what God's Word has to say to you. Here is Jack Hibbs. Hey everybody, welcome to our podcast, and I just want to remind you that uh, we have this uh, this little banner that we fly under, and, and it's this, it's time to live out what you believe in, it's time for real life, and that's what we're all about is real life. We, uh, we know, it's not that we believe, we know that the type of ministry that we're involved in in various areas, including this podcast, um, is something that I would say is authentic and organic. Um, uh, we're not sponsored by anybody. We're not getting any promos and we're not getting any commercials and we're not getting any help and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and we're not denying that kind of stuff if it comes our way. But the point is this, uh, we're going to keep doing this for this reason, not any monetary reasons whatsoever, but because it's truth, which re- which leads to real Christian life, real Christian living. And when I say that, here is the reason why. Uh, we're going to start looking at the authority, the person uh, of Jesus Christ, the number one name used in the world in cussing <laughs> is Jesus. Nobody screams Muhammad or Buddha when they drop a brick on their toe. They scream Jesus. We're going to be talking about the one who is the most loved individual on the planet and at the same time the most hated. Nothing's changed in these last 2,000 years since he's come. There's the great love for him among believers, and there's the absolute unexplainable in some areas disdain for him. There are people who hate Jesus who don't even believe in Jesus. Isn't that amazing? I want to submit to you that that is a spiritual dynamic and issue that should be evidence to everyone. What's with the name of Jesus? Why is his name? Why is Jesus Christ? His name is Jesus. His origin is earthly uh, from Nazareth, right? Jesus of Nazareth. But his eternal state, his eternal nature, is that he is God. And I'm deliberately dropping that bomb on you right now, if you're not familiar with this theological fact, because we're going to be proving that to you in this and other uh, soon-to-follow podcast regarding the person, the authority, the nature of who Jesus Christ is. By the way, when we go through this together, let me give you a little bit of background as to what I have in my hand right here. Uh, This is not from Wikipedia. This is not from some Christian.com thing. This is literally actually something that was given to me, and then I added to it... uh, Here's the reason why. Many of you oldies like me might remember a guy by the name of Walter Martin, doctor, professor, uh, extraordinaire, Dr. Walter Martin in Southern California. Uh, He was just a piece of iconic uh, Bible instruction teaching. I had a chance to sit under his Sunday afternoon teachings at the Newport Mesa Christian Fellowship on Sunday afternoons. Lisa and I would go. And Dr. Walter Martin would give an afternoon lecture. He'd go for a couple of hours. It was spellbinding. And I love that. I love this guy because he did not want to compete with any churches. And back in those days, every church had a morning service and every church had a Sunday evening service. And so he put his service right in the middle of the day. And uh, because he was very sensitive uh, to that uh, reality, I, I, anything you can get by Walter Martin. Um, is awesome. Read it. His uh, One of the great books that you should have on your shelf now is The Kingdom of the Cults by Dr. Walter Martin. The Kingdom of the Cults. Well, listen, he walked into the headquarters of the Jehovah Witnesses in Brooklyn, New York. That's where they're based. And um, he 
walked in there and he asked to speak to uh, someone in charge, someone there. And um, he, he went with the intent to witness. And, and so they sent down uh, to him a guy by the name of William Sentner or Sentnar. And William Sentnar came down and, to meet Walter Martin. And um, he introduced himself. Hi, I'm William Sentnar. And I'm head over the Department of Correspondence to the Jehovah Witnesses, the Watchtower Society. How can I help you? And Dr. Martin said, um, you guys are God's witnesses, right? That's right, sir. We are. And he said, I'd like to ask you some questions as to who am, who am I speaking about? I, I, ha I have these Bible verses, and I want you to answer me, who are we talking about? And he said, let's do it. That's fantastic. That's what, I employ that's what I'm employed to do. And the journey began. And you say, Jack, how do you know? Because what I'm about to share with you, Dr. Walter Martin and William Sentnar, Bill Sentnar, went through this on stage at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. I've got a guess. In the early 80s. And Lisa and I were there in person. We saw it live. And at that very time, I, I was working for... Uh, at that time, it was called American Edwards Laboratory as a division of American Hospital Supply Corporation, massive global corporation, but otherwise known today as uh, uh, Baxter Healthcare or Edwards Life Sciences. I, I worked for Edwards Life Sciences, and in one, uh, one of our co-workers was a very, very enthusiastic Jehovah Witness. And so when I heard this presentation... I was so blown away that after I went right up to Bill Sentinar and I said, can I have what you guys did tonight? And he said, absolutely. Back in those days, he said, give me your address and I'll mail it to you. <laughs> so it came by snail mail and um, I started using it on my friend at work. He was not only stumped, but he went to his Jehovah Witnesses overseers. They were stumped that my friend came back at work and said, uh, I can't talk to you anymore about this. And what is the this that we could not talk about anymore? And that was this, Jesus Christ and his deity. He said, we can talk about anything else, but we cannot talk about his deity because um, I, I showed what you gave me to my leadership at the watchtower. And I've been advised not to speak to you anymore about the deity of Jesus. Boom. That tells you everything about what we're going to start doing. I want all of you to take notes. I want you to get pen and paper out or get your laptop up or if it's your tablet your iPad, whatever it is, I want you to write these things down. Everyone who shows up at your door, knocking, riding up on bicycles, wearing a tie, or carrying a briefcase, I don't care what cult they're from, they differ in a lot of areas, but there's a few things they agree on, and that to the point of death, they'll die for it. And it's this number one on the list that the cults all agree is Jesus Christ cannot be God. Number one. Number one. Jesus Christ cannot be God. In all of the cults, he is less than the God who he is in the Bible. If you're a Mormon right now, you're saying, whoa, 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 we believe he's God. Of course you do, and you believe you can become a god too, and there are millions and zillions of Mormon gods. You've got Adam as god in Mormonism. In fact, according to Mormonism, Adam, God, is the god of this earth, planet earth. The god that the Mormon talks about is Adam. I don't know if you guys know that or not. you got to check that out. Now, your Mormon friends are not going to uh, overtly admit that. you got to search it in Mormon doctrine and teaching. But what does that do? It diminishes from Jesus. 
Why? Because the Bible says from Genesis to Revelation, there's only one God. Not a thousand, not a million, and you can't become a God, but do keep that in mind that the first false doctrine we hear about in the Bible is none other than from Satan himself who says, oh, come on, Eve, uh, take a bite, because God knows, you know, God's been pretty nasty. If you think about it, he's been holding out on you. Because he knows uh, that the day of you eat, uh, the day that you eat of this fruit, you'll be like him. Don't you want to be like God? Don't you want to be a God? And Eve fell for it. Anybody who knocks on your door and says you can become a God, you need to uh, get some snake repellent or put some garlic on your door. I'm joking. Uh, you, you're going to need to use what we're going to start going through. And be that any, listen, any, as Walter Martin points out in, in Kingdom of the Cults, even if it's a Christian cult, you say, well, Christian cult, what is that? Yes, yeah, some apologists consider the Seventh-day Adventists as being a Christian cult. They believe in the blood of Christ. They believe in the cross. They believe in his resurrection, but they have wiggled laws and legalism into uh, your salvation and your maintenance of your salvation. And one of them is the Sabbath-keeping um, which they completely failed to read the book of Colossians on that. So I've, I've pretty much offended a lot of people, except the Jews or, or Muslims yet, but we'll probably get to that in a moment. So get your paper ready. I've given you enough time. The question is, who's Jesus? Or is Jesus God? That could be at the top of your page. Um, or uh, is Jesus Christ truly Lord and Savior? That's the question. Who is Jesus Christ, the one of the Bible? Number one. And by the way, this is going to be an order. And I, I, I hope, hope you enjoy this. Number one, here's where we start. Uh, and rig your Bible, by the way. I would love for you to have your Bible right now. If not, go ahead and take these notes and then go rig your Bible. What do you, what do you mean rig? I only have to remember, me, Jack, I only have to remember one verse to do this to anybody who knocks on my door. It's Isaiah 48, 12. That's all I need to remember. Isaiah 48, 12. Write it down. Because at Isaiah 48, 12, I'm going to write down the next reference. You see? I only need to, rem I only need to remember one reference point. Isaiah 48, 12. And then the rest of it all flows. And so here we go. Yeah. Hi. Hey, uh, nice to meet you. Um, I'm here from uh, the Cult of XYZ. And we'd like to invite you to come and join us at one of our readings or one of our gatherings um, or uh, one of our discussions. Oh, well, that's interesting. Thanks for coming to my door. Um, first of all, I'm a Christian. Oh, we're Christians too. Oh, well, let me ask you a question. Uh, let me turn to Isaiah 48, 12, and I want to ask you, who are we talking about? Okay, great. And most people who knock on your door from a cult will have a Bible. By the way, Jehovah Witnesses that might be tuning in right now, or somebody has forwarded this to you because you are a J-dub, uh, even in your Johann Grieber, listen, Johann Grieber version of the new king or the old King James Bible. Listen to me carefully. Your version of the Johann Grieber Old King James Bible that the Jehovah Witnesses work out of, which is also uh, titled the New World Translation, uh, that was published or produced by Johann Grieber, and he was a Greek scholar who failed to identify or believe that Jesus Christ is God. So what he did was he systematically attacked the deity of Jesus, and it just so happens that the Jehovah Witnesses and their founding used his Bible. It's otherwise known as the New World Translation, but you can go ahead and use it. It's okay. Open it up because this is New World Translation proof. <laughs> okay. Uh, this works. Isaiah 48, 12. Question at my doorstep, sir. Who am I talking about? Listen to me, O Jacob, reference to Israel, and Israel my called. I am he, capital H. 
I am the first, I am the last. Capital F, first, capital L, last, I am the first, and I am the last. Who am I talking about? And the Jehovah Witness, the Mormon, the cultist is going to say, that's God. And I said, well, can we be more specific? You know, God has a name in the Bible, we all agree on this, and that is Yehovah. Oh, yes, Jehovah. In fact, yeah, yeah, I'm a Jehovah Witness. I'm a Yehovah Witness. I'm at your door, and yeah, great. So we all agree that this is God that Isaiah is referring to. Well, let's turn on over now because I wrote it down in Isaiah 48, 12. I wrote down Isaiah 44, 6. So we turn over to Isaiah 44, 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, that is Israel's Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. By the way, it's all caps on Lord, which is the word Yah, Y-A-H. That is God's name. God is not his name. Yah is the name of the God of the Bible. We say Yahweh, but Yahweh is uh, an extended mention of his actual name, Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is to praise Yah. Praise salvation. His name, actually, his name is salvation. Yah is root, that's salvation. His name is salvation. Did you know that? It's awesome. Uh, Isaiah 44, 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who are we talking about? In that faithful, diligent worker at your front door will say, Jehovah God, no doubt about it. Hey, I agree with you. Right on. We're we're tracking. And they're going to be very proud of themselves. You're going to feel you're going to be feeling good too about yourself because uh they're stepping right into a a a truth trap here. So, all right, very good. Let's go to Isaiah 41 verse 4. Isaiah 41 verse 4. Who has performed and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I the Lord, Yah, am the first and I am with the last. Woo. There's a interesting little insert there in the scripture, an, an announcement. I want to read it again. Isaiah 41, 4, who has performed it and done it? Calling the generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, I, the salvation, I, Yah, am the first and with the last, I am he. Interesting verbiage, right? It's powerful in English. It's stronger in the Hebrew language. But doesn't matter. Who are we talking about here? Yahweh. We're talking about Jehovah. It's obvious. His name's even in the verse. Touchdown. Okay, right on. We're tracking. Let's turn to Isaiah 43, verse 10. By the way, the Isaiah 43, verse 10 is the theme verse for the Jehovah Witnesses, for the Watchtower Society. You are my witnesses, says Yah, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe and understand that I am he before me. There was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. That's it. That is a definitive declaration of the nature of God. It doesn't mean that God was born and that God is going to die, that he was not, and then he is and he is not. It means that speaking in human terms before anything was, I was there. And when all else is dissolved and gone, I'm still there. He's, he's speaking to us mortals in eternal terms. Point being, I am the Lord. Yeah. I don't have a beginning and I don't have an ending. There's nobody before me. There's not going to be anybody after me. If I had an ending, there's nobody going to come after me. That's what he is announcing. We all agree on this dialogue at the doorstep. We're, we're tracking. We're spot on. All right. Do we agree that the Bible is the word of God? And the cults will say to you, absolutely. So long as it's correctly interpreted, the Mormons will say, well, of course we agree with you on that one. 
But we all agree on this, that when the names of God are employed, it's talking about one God. Now, the Mormons, again, might say, yeah, yeah, we're talking about Adam God, but they're thinking about one God. The Jehovah Witnesses will be thinking about one God, and the Christian is certainly thinking about one God. And um, by the way, if you are a Muslim or a Jew, you need to be listening to this. Because even though the Muslim does not believe in the prophets of the Bible, they, they do claim to believe in one God. Uh, if you're Jewish right now, you certainly, I'm reading your scriptures up until this moment, and you would have to say, I got gotcha. you. Okay, we're tracking with you, Gentile Christian. Okay, let's take a deep breath and dive in for just a moment into the New Testament. I know for some of you, you can't go there, but your rabbi is nowhere around. Be brave, be strong. Go to the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, written by a Jew, by the way, and listen to what is recorded, quoting God speaking. I am the Alpha and the Omega. That's interesting because even though it's in Greek, it is a Hebrew citation of the one true God. The beginning and the end says the Lord, who is, who was, who is to come, the Almighty. Revelation 1.8. Question at the doorstep. Ask the guy, ask the gal, ask the people, who am I talking about? And they're going to say, Jehovah God. And you're going to say, spot on. I agree. Revelation 4.8. Still written by a Jew. Revelation 4.8. And the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, who is to come, who am I talking about? We're all tracking. It's God. No doubt. Revelation 1, verse 11. Revelation 1, 11. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and what you see, write in the book and send it to the seven churches. Book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 11, the point being, how many first and last do we have in the Bible? One. How many Alpha and Omegas do we have in the Bible? One. Revelation 21, verse 6. Revelation 21, verse 6. Again, the Jew is speaking to us. And he said to me, it's done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So John is recording what he's hearing from whoever this individual is. This individual is saying, it's done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Who is that? You've got to be honest. You can only have one. Whoever he is, he's the beginning and the end. He holds time. In eternity, he possesses time. He's eternal, but he holds time between, as it were, the span of his hand. That's, this is the span of your hand. That's my broken finger. Here's my, <laughs> this one's busted, as you can see, so we'll do an accurate measurement. Between, between this finger and this finger is known as the span of the hand in the Bible, and God says, I hold everything material in the span of my hand. Who is that? Um, Revelation 22, 13. This is one of my favorite verses. My goodness, everybody listen up. Revelation 22, 13. Here, this is going to be a this is going to be something. I'll tell you why right now. Some of you have some modern day translations based upon various publishers. In other words, you might have a Tyndale Bible. You might have a New World Translation Bible. You might have a Zondervan, Zondervan Bible. You might have a Moody Bible. You may have a, a Bible by some other publisher. You're going to want to do some homework right now in the area of King James, New King James, ESV, NIV, to mention a few regarding this upcoming verse. Why? Because some of the newer translations 
or publishers, which some of these companies are not even owned by Christians anymore, have chosen in recent decades to use some of the other later Greek manuscripts to literally remove this verse from the book of Revelation. Some of your Bibles, what I'm about to read, will not even contain the verse I'm about to give you. If you don't think there's a war on truth, you should know it now. By the way, the Dead Sea Scrolls, ancient writings, antiquity, the older you can go back, the more firm the truth is. The oldest is the most reliable. So watch this. Revelation twenty two thirteen. Who am I talking about? I am the Alpha and the Omega. Jack, we already established that. It's Jehovah. And there can only be one. True. The beginning and the end. Same thing. The first and the last. Revelation 22, 13 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Who am I talking about? Hey, guys, listen, we're at the 26-minute mark. I'm looking at the producers here. Do I keep going? Do we say pick us up next time? Because uh, they're saying five, four, five more minutes on this. Question person who knocked on my door. Who am I talking about? There's an overwhelming agreement that the individual knocking on your door will say, we're talking about God Almighty, the Jehovah, the, the, the Yahweh God, Jehovah God, because there's only one Alpha and Omega. There's only one beginning and the end. There's only one first and the last. And I'm going to say, I agree with you. These last closing moments, hang on tight. Here we go. Revelation 117, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. And when I saw him, John said, I fell at his feet as dead. John just passed out, fell flat on his face. But he said, but, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and I am the last. Who is that? John said, I saw him, and I went face down, like a dead man. He came to me, and he touched me, and said, don't be afraid. I'm the first, capital F, and I am the last, capital L. Who is this? You see, you have to, you have to stay consistent with this title, because there's only one. There's not two. Revelation 1, verse 18. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. We're going to end right here. We'll pick it up next time together because let me tell you, we got a lot. Whoever the Alpha and the Omega is in the Old Testament, you can only have one. Whoever the first and the last is in the Old Testament, you can only have one. Whoever the one who is, who was, who was, who is, who is to come, you can only have one. Whoever the Almighty is, you can only have one. Whoever the Lord is, Yah, you can only have one. Are you tracking? You're tracking. I know you're tracking. You can only have one. Whoever this one is, died. And rose again from the dead. Revelation chapter 1 verses 17 and 18 say so. You say, well, that's a coincidence. Here's where we'll end. Revelation chapter 2 verse 8. And to the angel of the church at Smyrna write, Smyrna is in Turkey. It's an archaeological site today. Um, but Smyrna still exists. These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
Listen, we're going to pick this up next time. I want you to grab everybody you know, seriously. First of all, of course, you know what? You can really help us out. We don't need your money. I mean, we're not going to refuse it either. We're not stupid. If you want to send money to help us get this on bigger and more platforms, then that helps. But I'm not asking. Get everybody you can. Get a small group together. Let's go through this together. Work this out where you guys can link in or, or, or connect or whatever or share it. Because this, listen, by the time we come to the end of this, it can save someone's eternal destination. If you're a Mormon, tune in. If you are a Jehovah Witness, oh my gosh, you've, you've got to ride this wave all the way to the shore. you got to tune in. Hey, listen, even if you hate everything I'm talking about, I'm going to ask you how come. I don't care if you hate me. Get in line. But why would you hate the Bible that you claim to believe in? And so I'm asking you to share this. I'm asking you to subscribe, like it, pass it along. You can share this with more people. You can always make sure, in fact, you'll hear from the young lady in the closeout what you can do. But this is life-changing stuff we're talking about right here, right now. So that's why we say it's time for you and I to live out what we believe in. It's time for real life. He's the one, only one. There's not another. There'll never be another. He is the Lord God, eternal Yahweh, who came to earth, took on skin. We'll see this in the next few podcasts. Died and rose again from the dead. The first and the last died. The Alpha and the Omega died. The one who was, who is, who is to come died. The Almighty died and rose again, and he lives forevermore. I'll meet you next time, for sure. This Jack Hibbs podcast, as well as all the broadcast outreach opportunities, are listener-supported. Will you consider partnering with us through a special gift? Go to jackhibbs.com to learn more and stay connected. Thank you.